I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight, Eastside Baptist Church, for our Sunday evening worship service. And before I read the text for tonight, I just want to um, encourage you as this weekend we will have um, Easter at Eastside. And we have just a wonderful, wonderful weekend planned. Friday is our um, Good Friday service at 7 o'clock. And then, of course, we have our Easter Sunday service at 11 o'clock. There will not be an evening service for our Easter Sunday. We have flyers back um, at the welcome desk. And I just want to encourage you here tonight. Take a flyer with you and pray about who you're going to give that to. It takes the whole church getting involved, inviting people, asking people to come and be a part of Easter at Eastside. So take a flyer, pray about who you're going to give it to, uh, make a call this week, and encourage people to come and be a part of our Good Friday service and, and our Sunday morning Easter service as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight I want to read to you from Psalm 95. In verse 6, come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let us pray tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, what a great joy it is that we can gather together, that we can worship you. Lord, Tonight, as we worship by way of song, I pray, Lord, that you would speak through the music that is sang, through the group that is here. And Lord God, I'm thankful for them. And God, I just pray that you would do a great work tonight through this singing. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight we, we have a group from, um, from uh, Weaverville, North Carolina, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and ask them to come on up, and they're going to introduce themselves. Little boy with a little brown basket thought it was crazy when someone asked him if he could have his fish and bread. I wonder who could have ever guessed it that when Jesus broke and blessed it, thousands would be fed. How bad.
are weary, the singers are tired, the church as we know it is losing its fire. Some are discouraged from bearing the load, but we must be dormant to keep pressing on. Just a good fun more song, where to all It'll be worth every mile A lifetime of labor Is still worth it all If it rescues just one more soul So preachers keep preaching And singers go sing And laymans keep sharing That Jesus is King have gathered surrounding their throne and they'll start rejoicing for just one more soul cause if just one more soul were to walk down the aisle it'll be worth every struggle it'll be worth every mile a lifetime of labor is still before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and worship Him in song. Uh, that's why we're here. We're here to have church, and I hope that you will join us in doing so. I want you to listen to this next song Keith is going to sing for us. A lot of times we struggle with why. Lord, why? Why did you save me? Why did you come for me? And this song explains it better than any song or anything could ever be preached or said. It's because He loves me. i 
six years. We've, uh, we've been through a lot together, and I'm thankful that uh, we're, God's blessed us with the opportunity to be able to sing his praises together. Are you happy to see Keith Allen tonight? If you are, give him a hand. Amen. This next lady that I want to uh, introduce, uh, this next song uh, is one of her features. Um, her name's Dina Fortner, and uh, when, when she came I gave her this song and I told her, I said, I love this song. I want to sing this song. Can you do it? She said, well, let me listen to it and we'll see how it goes. Some songs are not meant for, sure, for some people. And uh, she listened to it and she said, Nathaniel, I, I just don't get it. She said, I'm just going to be honest with you, I just don't get it. And I said, well, I said, listen to it a little bit more. And if you like it, then we're going to sing it. If you don't like it, We'll listen to it a couple more times until you can start to like it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. But she listened to it, and about a week and a half later, she came back and with tears in her eyes and said, I, I've got it. I've got it. And for those of you who might know what I mean by I've got it, sometimes there's a certain period of time in your life where God gets your attention through a certain circumstance. And it was at this point in her life that she really figured out what this song means. So I want to tell you tonight, if we don't say anything else, you're not in this alone. This COVID virus has hurt a lot of families, hurt a lot of churches, hurt a lot of people. Sin has hurt a lot of people. Life has hurt a lot of people. Whatever you're facing tonight, whatever it might be, if you look around you, you'll see God's people. I want you to know, you're not in this alone.
vision that home above Trusting fully, trusting in the Savior's love Doing what I can for heaven's holy dove I'm getting ready to leave this world I'm getting ready to leave this world Sorrow, I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl Keeping my vengeance right Watching both days Dear Heavenly Father, God, how good it is to be able to sit and to listen, Lord, and to worship through song. I pray tonight as we have our time of worship through giving, pray, Lord, that you would just continue, Lord, to bless this worship. In 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you folks that got his preachers get in trouble. <laughs> I've always been a preacher's kid. Um, my dad and mom were saved before um, I was born. And I can honestly say, not I'm honestly not praising my parents, but I can say they've done everything they could to be right in the center of where God wants me to be. Done the best that they could. But life, life is hard sometimes, just like it is with, with everybody. I mean, sometimes life hits. And uh, Dad always told me, he said, son, when you don't know what to do, stay in the boat. Don't abandon ship. Stay right there. God's in control. Find where God's at and get with him. That's where you go to stay protected. But even as a preacher's kid, I, it, took, it took me coming down to a point to realize that I couldn't get into heaven on my dad's coattail. I had to make a profession of faith myself. I had to accept him as Savior myself. August 25th, 2006, I remember that morning well. I came, bowed down at an old-fashioned altar, and got saved. Two years ago, me and my wife were planning our wedding, and she had already moved into what was going to be our new home. And we were trying to get everything situated, trying to get all, all the bills and stuff arranged. You know how all that works. And the bank had lost next month's rent. We were a month ahead. It lost next month's rent. And the rent payment was more than I could just come up with like that. We went to the bank and we started all the whole claim and and everything, and they basically just told us, there's nothing we can do, sorry. Sorry about your bad luck, pretty much. We walked on our way, and I'm gonna be honest with you. My mom and dad, my grandparents, her grandparents, had already done so much to help us with our wedding. The last thing I wanted to do was ask for more help. And uh, you can call it pride, you can call it whatever you want, but I just, I was not gonna do it unless that was the last my last resort. Well, we, uh, my, my dad didn't know about this at this time. I called him at lunch one day, and because and, uh, I was coming home for lunch, 
every day. I, I worked back close to our, where we were living. And uh, I walked up to my mailbox, and I remember I, I, took, I was on the phone with my dad, and I told him, I said, Dad, you wouldn't believe what's going on. And he said, what? And I told him the whole story. And he said, well, what are you going to do? And he, he said, son, I want to help. I just don't know what I need to do to help because I can't help you that much. I said, Dad, I, I said, with all due respect, I don't want the help. This is something that I need to figure out myself. And he respected that. The next statement was, son, what are you going to do? I said, Dad, God's going to have to do something. Because I'm at my last thread of hope. I'm at my wit's end. No, 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 just as soon as I said that, I opened our mailbox. And we were getting our wedding gifts. We had three cards out. And what's the first thing that you do when you look at wedding cards? You check the gift. That's what you do. Well, this last one, I said, well, I'm not going to be... Uh, I'm not going to be mean. I'm going to be respectful. I will read the card first. I pulled the card out. I read through it. I opened it up. And inside lies a check for twice the rent money. Amen. Now you tell me that God does not take care of his children. I could not dial my phone fast enough to get a hold of my wife, of my parents, and just tell them what God just done. We, we had a, I've got a three-year-old son, and we just had another one in September. And we had moved into a new home, and I'm going to be honest with you, it, it was one of them deals where it was a blessing just right up front. But just as soon as the sun came home, the first thing that I started feeling when we walked in that door is how am I going to raise my kids? How am I going to raise them? And I got to thinking about that check and how if we were to just turn to God with all of our problems, first, a lot of our heartaches would be over with very quickly. Our circumstances would change if we were to just rely on Him first things first. So I said, my boys are going to know who God is and what He's capable of. If you can teach somebody and show somebody how wonderful and how good God really is, the power of God is unlimited in your life. He said, he said if we were to praise him, he'd inhabit the praises of his people. And that's what, why we do what we do. We want to praise him. We want to worship him. So my boys are with their grandparents tonight watching their papa preach. And he says the same thing. Son, God's good. In your circumstance, through your failure, through your problems, you just remember something. God is always good. So hold on. Don't panic. Keep the faith. Find God and run to him as fast. He is in control. Lately I've been looking back along this winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche. There's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond.
through it all. God's been replay I can see I've cried those bitter tears but as loving arms surrounded me as I faced my darkest fears I've had more gains than losses and I've known more joy than hurt as his grace rolled down upon me undeserved God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. Cause through it all, been through a lot this past year. Actually, mine started in, at the end of 2019. Uh, I started having some, I thought it was indigestion pains. I don't know if anybody's ever been through this here. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of you that have. But I uh, uh, ended, ended up having open heart surgery. I know, I know you're thinking, why would a 35 year old, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm 57. Why would a 56 year old man be having open heart surgery. I had five bypasses. I was so close to death. One of, one of those was, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Widowmaker. Uh, it, uh, it's over when, when, that, when that clogs up, it's, it's done. I, I, it was 80% clogged and uh, I had four, uh, five others that were completely clogged. So I didn't have weeks. I didn't have days, I had hours to live. And if I hadn't got to, I was, I was sitting at hospice uh, with my wife and her family, her brother was dying of cancer. And it hit me like a, you know, they say like a ton of elephants sitting on your chest. Uh, my grandson was sitting on my lap and, and uh, uh, I told my wife, I said, I, I need some, some, has anybody got some Tums? I thought I was having indigestion. And, but they gave me aspirin, didn't do a thing, gave me, the amb ambulance got there and gave me nitro. And of course that helped. And so I, I ended up going to the hospital. And, and, and I tell you what, the, the, the next song that we're gonna sing is called Children in the Arms of God. 
And that first verse says, I feel the touch of hands. I know we've all felt it. If, if you're one of his, one of, your, one of his children, you've felt that touch at times. He is so faithful. I work in a hospital. I work at that hospital actually, and and I go, get to go around and, and see patients, and and uh, and there's so many so many people in the hospital that don't have hope, that don't feel like they have hope. I, I should say they have hope. We all have hope, uh, but uh, I, I just tell them God's got this. He knows all about it, and and in 2019. I tell people, you've just got to trust Him. And that's what I had to do, uh, is just trust Him. And if you're going through something tonight that, that you feel like there's no end, um, I, I, I'll, I never, I'll never forget, after I got through the surgery was in my room, uh, they came in and talked to me and told me, you're going to be really, really emotional going through such a, a hard surgery. You're going to have a hard time controlling your emotions and and the guy that me and Nathaniel used to sing with he came in the room and he said uh, are you ready to get back on the road singing I started crying couldn't stop I, I, I bet I cried for 45 minutes just trying just thinking this is never going to end but that wasn't trusting him was it and uh you know, I had to repent for that, but but I tell you what, uh, he got me through it, uh, gave me uh, just a, such a blessing of being able to stand and look at you and say, God's not through with me yet, and looking out at all of you, all looking at me, God's not through with any of us, he wants to use us. Listen as Dina sings this song, uh, Sheltered in the Arms of God.
thank you so much for having us. We've enjoyed being here. We've enjoyed coming to South Carolina where it's a little bit warmer. We, we, we like warm weather. I don't know about y'all, but uh, we really enjoy uh, coming over and being with you. We hope that something that we've sung tonight has been a blessing, uh, that you've got, got a blessing out of it. We hope that we've been able to get out of the way and let Jesus be seen through what we've sang. And I just want to leave you with one thing. Go be Jesus to your world. to you about the atonement. Good Friday, we're focusing on uh, Jesus and him giving his life. And then Sunday morning, gathering together and celebrating the thing that seals your salvation, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I wonder, can we pray tonight, ask for heaven to come down during those two opportunities, and Ask God to bring people here and that God would show up in a magnificent way. A way that I can't plan as the pastor of this church and you can't plan as the people of the church. But asking God to show up and do something big. Who will come and join me at the altar and pray tonight for Easter at Eastside? 